It's the last one until November. And we're not joking around this time because uh, last time it was a tease. We were like, hey, he's going to be gone. Like he even said at the beginning, I'm going to be gone. I'm oh, going. Or, I'm going. <laughs> but he's back. Um, a finale before the school hiatus. How so. was Florida? It was good. Uh, really humid. Really horrible. Catch lots of bugs. Salts. Lots of gators. Uh, didn't eat my skin potatoes. Ooh, TGI skin potatoes. Like them, lick them, love them. We're just going to get right into it because there's no time to waste. It's a it's a mad world, says Dom. Um, very mad world. Check it out. Gears of War uh, 3. Yeah, it's 3. Yeah, that's kinda, the one where you kinda, drive the fucking truck into this. <laughs> just all run together and then... Locust Swarm or whatever it's going Marcus on. Phoenix goes, Dom! Is, uh, Dom! is it the same one with uh, Pole Train... Whole train, yeah, it is. That's the best one. That's what I made can't it the greatest. That's in the same game. It's one of the best things I've ever seen. <laughs> I'm a coal train. Oh, coal trains is better. Really? It's yeah, much. I, I mean, see. like, like the Dom death scene is. It's equally like garbage, horrible camp cheese. But like, you think they could have actually done something with pole train? If coal they, train, <laughs> if they really like, they kind of did it first, but then they ruined it. It was still really cute. Yeah, that, that little, <laughs> that little smile, a little grin. I wish he stiff armed a locust horde into the ground. I think he did actually. Oh, I don't... it was a lambent. Why are we talking about Gears of War? <laughs> it's too early for that. Well, I mean, it's coming um, in October. Four. Yeah, got old man Phoenix. <laughs> my tomato, my fucking tomatoes. Have you seen that? No. In the in the gameplay, Is that like, his response not my fucking squad? tomatoes. Oh. Oh, I'm gonna talk about that. Oh, we've got lots to talk about. Should, do we want to do a quick uh, recap of the last podcast? All we did was talk about it. Nick. Yeah, we, but that I was apologize. a. It had to happen. It, it was. Um, it was a necessary evil, just like Nick. Well, it's like you said about Steve Terrenberry. He's the the greatest problem. Mm. Um, but it's mm. out of the way. We've closed that. Chapter. We're moving on to p- things. Uh, Draymond um, is German. What did you say? Draymond. Oh, got a little. You know, it's funny you should bring that up. Cause See, I, I don't think we... I think we can topple Draymond. We haven't... Uh, we toppled RJ3K House. I don't, I don't know. Well, you know... We toppled Nick. What can those we are now? both very small foes. I mean, Nick had more subscribers on Facebook than RJ3K oh, House it, did. It's like that album that Drayman, Drain Man wrote. 10,000 fists in my ass. When I need a little bit of inspiration, I'd spark up and get illumination... I, Is that I can't, a line? Can't, Isn't that a line? It's like fire, it. fire ah! me, fi- fire me up, dance. I'm David Drain, man. Um, we found a great picture of him. Look up David Drayman hair, and it's like a a picture of him while he's at a baseball game or something. It's really good. It's probably at the Great Yankee Stadium. Uh, where all you all you peanuts at two bucks get one free. Um, anyway, what is that? we got Drayman up there. <laughs> We got Dwayman updated. Yeah. It's back. Yeah. The writings on the world. Thanks. Um. Anyway, do you know about the band Alter Bridge? No. Alter Bridge is what remained of Creed oh, without wow. Scott Stapp. <laughs> and um, he was recently <laughs> deterred. Was joined by Miles Kennedy of Alter Bridge. For a performance of Sound and Garfunkel's The Sound of Silence. Oh, man. man. And, and this was in Houston! Oh, my! What are the odds? You could have seen actually it. actually know exactly where that is. Well. The venue. This, um, 
It's supposed they're supposed to be doing. You know, it's like what can we do next with um this garbage cover of the Sound of Silence? How do we ride it out for more money? We've already toppled the world. Got like eight hundred million everything's. <clears throat> already got Is that like your Draymond impression. Ooh, ah, ah. We've already got like we've already. We've already got like 8 million views and listens on every website possible. More than that, like 800 million. A billion. Um, but let's get the fucking dude from the, the Creed Leftover band, Alter Bridge, to try to do a harmony with me. And this is what you get. Here we go. Ladies and gentlemen. Ooh, that voice. Yeah, that's a... a I'm, so, e- I'm the- so excited. That metallic voice. Ooh. Fuck off, you fucking idiot. Here we go. Oh! Oh, he's wearing that little vest. He is. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Cool. Look at him walking on. Who was he in the uh, Creed experiment? I think he's just the vocalist for the new, the leftover Creed band. Oh, really? okay. Yeah. Is he a Yarler? Huh? Is he a Yarl? No. Is he like this? Okay. He'd really happy. Uh oh. Look at that guy. Wow. You guys have got to watch this video while we talk about it. Just layer it over it. Look at all the cell phone cameras. Fuck. Listen. He, they're not even harmonizing. He was just on one note. This doesn't work. Exactly. He's <laughs> way too low. By the way. David Draymond, who complained about people, like, fucking with cell phones at concerts, oh my now God, has man, everyone pulling out a fucking cell phone camera light or whatever. To think that I missed this. Oh. Oh, man. What a fucking sadness. They're not even... They're, like, just... Like, every... Yeah, I know the guy's, like, doing this little hand... It's so meaningful. Every six notes, they, like, hit one harmonized note, but it's, like, flat. Oh, get ready. Just get ready. Because, man, something's about to happen. Oh, oh. You need the video component of this, really, because... Oh, my God. Oh, just wait. Just wait. Draymond's about to make his move. They're like synchronized with their hand waving. <laughs> boom, boom, boom. Okay, here we go. It's about to. It's picking up now. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Got a little ch- ch- crowd from the ch- or cheer from the crowds. Just wait. Something's about. Oh yes! Look at them. Look at the crowd. Just, they're just reaching for dra- Drain Man. Ah, oh sure, okay. everyone was just leaving at the back. Oh! My Sims copy! <laughs> Chris not over the Sims 4! Oh, here it comes! Look, why are they waving their hands like that? Why are you taking a picture of this? Yeah. The guy on the right is weird looking. I mean, yeah, like and he's Drain- sitting next to David Draymond. Drain, yeah, exactly. Drain man's. Look at that drummer. Oh shit! Oh shit! He got up! He's coming! He got up! He got out of his seat! It's picking up, man! Oh, they're they're looking at each they're other. They're about to have a duel with their cocks! Look at that drummer, man! Oh man. It's so like I need this ought to be a video thing for us. Oh my words! Fail! Look at that drummer! I just want to get to the part where it says whisper. <laughs> We're almost there, guys. Get ready for whispers. There's a long dreaming update. They made. Here, Here it comes. Oh, fuck. Oh, fuck. Oh, here it is! He doesn't do it as much. He didn't do the written on! Still one written on! Written on! Wait, here it is. Whispered! Alright, that's enough. Wow, 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 wow.
Man, that what is what an update. Uh, t- Jesus Quite an Christ. update. Talk about pomp and circumstance. <laughs> Woo! And, Man, um, what a hullabaloo. If that you, was horrible. If you've never heard um, Alter Bridge's music, let me like the, the funny thing about that was Drain Man was just drowning that guy out. Like, and mm-hmm. it, even if they were harmonizing, yeah, they didn't work at all. You, you couldn't tell. You think that's the first time they ever tried that? Like, th- that was horrible. It sounds like they didn't rehearse it at all. Yeah, exactly. Like, it just doesn't sound right. Let, let's play a song from Ultra Bridge called Addicted to Pain. <laughs> this is so bad. Oh, we got an ad. Forgive uh, me. Is that Hugh Dancy? <laughs> I wish. I really wish. He's in some new show. All right. Here's a little. Oh, my God. This is the leftover Creed band. I just want you to hear this guy sing. It's like that! Oh, man. Wow. It doesn't sound anything like Creed. No. They're too intense. A bitch sevenfold. Better than that. You think so? I think it's very similar. But shitty, nonetheless. What is this imagery? Potent video to go along with your shit song. Alright, I've seen enough. Alright, all All American Creed Jacks. (laughs) Oh! But yeah, like, why Drain Man chose to have this be his guy, I I do not know. While we're on the subject of really bad bad things uh that's I all just, we talk about i just remember watching a an interview when i was like in ninth or tenth grade yeah about main man keenan of Uh-oh. cool talking Uh-oh. about quote Blood unquote wine. <laughs> slippery biscuit being like his like biggest <laughs> enemy in the music industry <laughs> first of all tool um don't you're, forget you're, nick you're has a tool, tool tattoo. yeah uh nick has a tool tattoo backwards um check out the lyrics it's for just zombie the fact that the tool guy is making fun of limp biscuit like i, I come on he deserve. i mean he he can do that because admittedly, he? Limp Biscuit is Limp Biscuit. Yeah, uh, sure. Come on, but man. That's also low hanging fruit. Limp Biscuit never tried to be serious or artistic. Tool tried and failed. Which do you think is worse? I just think Limp Biscuit thinks they're doing something tough and cool. Well, yeah, that's the whole but facade Tool, that they put. I out. don't know. I I think I, I I'm gonna side with Maynard here. You know. I would definitely always side with Maynard. Not side um, with Durst. No, I would always side with the main man from Pussifer. Durst for the hearse. Right. Durst for the hearse. That might be the title. That could be the title. <laughs> that could be the title. Durst for the hearse. Oh, hearse. wow. Hearse. <laughs> oh, shit. Well, <laughs> um, did you want to talk about anything before I get into the meat and potatoes of this here podcast right now? Is that your news? Is that where we're going to focus Oh, there's on? all kinds of news. Um, have you seen any movies lately? Oh, funny you should ask. Thank you for that segue. Well, before I get to the movie I saw, a little piece of news about the movie I saw. Mm. You may have heard all about this. Um, the movie was Suicide Squad, which we've talked at length about before. Right. Um, did you hear about this? <laughs> well. Please read that. First of all, I think it was funny. I, I, I didn't have this pulled up for the news, but before Suicide Squad came out, there was a... A petition by fans of the movie that they had not seen to get to Rotten shut Tomatoes. down Rotten Tomatoes or to get them to like fix the whatever. Right. Which, which I, I mentioned is last so podcast. Funny. Uh, Rotten Tomatoes does not review movies; they aggregate reviews. Mm-hmm. It's not their fault. Exactly. They're simply giving us the truth of what the critics are saying. Exactly. I mean, it's not a great system because you can't really just it's better take than all this kind of gray matter and put it into a number. It's just you know. But it's still, it's not Rotten Tomatoes' Like you fault. said, it helps us, you know, feel things out. Right, little... it does. Oh, look at that fuck from the Big uh, Bang Theory in this new Meryl Streep movie. Streep, 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 Meryl Streep, I can't speak. What's his name? Kunks? Yeah. I love that guy. Anyway, so, in, in, in the aftermath of Suicide Squad coming out and everyone, most mostly everyone hating it, right? You know, it's we're, pretty much everyone's in agreement that it's shit. Right. right, right. Even like, the most of the hardcore fans would say, yeah, it's, it's not that bad, yeah. but it's, it's not good. Okay, thank Did Nick ever weigh in? 
Um, because you never let me know. I, I was supposed to get my Nick. He's fuck. What did he? I, I don't know. I don't know if he actually gave us a firm opinion. Ooh, come on, he had to say something. You may have to look. Um, uh, well, I just know that he said Ghostbusters was the tits. Uh, so I can. And he also said, "Call me tits" when I was right, playing Buster. Right. Um, I can probably take a good guess that he liked it. Anyway, <laughs> who wouldn't? Jared. Leto. It's like what he said about BVS. It's not great. It's not bad. It's good. Solid, yeah. Fucking idiot. Um, well, so one disappointed... Wait, how can you be a, a disappointed Suicide Squad fan? If you didn't like it, you're not a fan, right? I don't know. Anyway... Well, that's, that's kind of the way it works, right. This uh, guy, Reddit user Black Panther 2016 <laughs> shared a long post on the website de- detailing his... Oh, his or her, it's got to be his, grievances against the studio, Warner Brothers, for the misleading amount of Joker scenes in the film's many trailers. Yeah. And what was it, seven minutes of actual screen time? Oh, I thought it was seven, not 15. Anyway. I heard seven. All uh, well, this is bullshit. I want to go with seven. Yeah, let's make it look as bad as possible. Yes. The guy is quoted as saying, my brother, who's a lawyer, and I are going to sue Warner Brothers and DC for false advertising, misleading visual images, and gaining a profit from us and millions of others due to these acts. Which, you know, there's no legal basis for this at all. Well, it, no, not at all. It, it, it goes hand in hand with um, my whole tweet rant thing about um, just how this movie deserves to fail mm-hmm. because of their marketing. Mm-hmm. Like I don't hey, care if the movie I don't was care really how much good. The Joker shows up. Like f- th- their marketing has been shit from day one. Oh yeah. So it's, for me to be surprised, they marketed is ridiculous, it somewhat so. like one of those like one of those rowdy boys like in action movies, movies with like Bradley Cooper and Miles Teller and like Zach Galifianakis yeah. doing something crazy. Like one of those movies, just like uh oh, here they come. And then they're, it's never like. I don't think the trailers were good, but it's never going to live up to the chaos that the and, trailers you know, you know, show. Most people already hate Bohemian Rhapsody. so <sighs> What a weak choice. Like The fact that they did that really upset me, because I actually like that song. I'm a big Queen fan. So basically, whenever any song is uh, used in a trailer, it's like, oh, well, there there goes that song. Even if it's a good movie. Oh, well, well I mean, goes. they also use the Heathen song by 21 Pilots. Oh, in it. oh my God, by the way. Um, did I already mention that that fucking Fall Out Boy song is playing at my um, place of work? What uh, was it? The, the Uma, Uma Thurman? Yeah. With the, pl- like, canned surf rock Garbage surf sample. rock. Yes. Yeah. It's playing at my place of work all the time, and it's really frustrating. It's oh. better than the Remember Me for Centuries one, I think. <sighs> I don't know. I really don't know. They're they're all pretty rough. Well, come to RJ3K for all your Fallout Boy opinions and uh, top ten list. Well, anyway, I, I I just thought this was funny enough that you know, in all the wake of the Suicide shit, Suicide, <laughs> suicide Squad shit, this is happening. And um, I've got one more piece of Suicide shit. Um, main man Jared Leto, Jorker, Jared Jorker Leto, <laughs> Jorker Leto. <laughs> Um, has been quoted as saying, fuck him, about DC. Is this part of the character? Is he still the Joker? No, he actually broke his method of acting for once. He broke kayfabe or whatever. He did. He's <laughs> This is a wrestling movie. Um, well, last week at Camp Mars, which is some kind of press event, Leto gave, went full vent about his frustration. Um, there's no actual quotes, but people have been... So <laughs> oh, Jesus. <laughs> he just popped out of nowhere a picture of him. People have been... He, basically, this is, um, um, I don't know. What's the phrase? Wait. Paraphrased. Basically, this is paraphrased. He was very honest about the film this weekend. His disappointment and what he's learned of the theatrical cut. He's still not seen the film. <laughs> feeling sort of, What? Feeling sort of tricked into being a part of something that had been pitched to him very differently. Thinking it would have been more artistic than what it became. It's a fucking... Oh my Feeling God. overwhelmed by the hate regarding the look and choices. What's more, he also disclosed another thing that's frustrating him about his work with Warner Brothers. He's been a rock climber. Oh! <laughs> but as part of his contract, he's forbidden to take part in dangerous activities like rock climbing. His response was startling. Fuck him. <laughs> he mailed him a dead pig. 
<laughs> he just can't stay. He can't break the habit. No. <laughs> Love that Linkin Park song. <laughs> Mail the pig? Yes. <laughs> but yeah, this is just so great. And everyone's so upset. Including Jared Leto. Uh, 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 yeah, Jared Leto's that's upset. Funny. That's funny it's that it came back all thing. the way around to that. It's the best fucking Jared thing. Jared Leto hates this movie. Because look, I won't oh, deny. I'm sure he tried. Oh, yeah, okay. I'm sure he gave it his all. You sure. know, it was fucking terrible, but he gave it his... I don't, actually, to tell you the truth, and I'm about to get into my Suicide Squad talk, because I saw it. Um, I didn't see enough to know if it was genuinely bad. Because the way the movie was, like, ham-fisted together... Anything good could be, like, bad. Well. Well, uh, I want to say, to go with his, like, whole, I thought it was going to be artistic. Mm. Oh, my God, man. A comic book movie comes out every three to four months. They're going to pump them out. Like, that's just what it is. It's a money I think machine. he really thought. They I, don't have to make it good. I read a GQ. Obviously, they do not have to make it good. It's got a 20-something look, percent on Rotten Tomatoes, and it's going to be the top movie of the summer. I read a GQ article about what well, with Jared Leto being interviewed where you know they brought up you know oh you're it's pretty bold what you're doing you're 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 the first person to pick up the mantle after Heath Ledger so how are you going to really approach it and I mean he had a whole set of bullshit he thought he was going to do and stuff he had all this reverence for Heath Ledger obviously because he's got to kiss ass and be like because he knows the fans would rip him apart otherwise but like I, you never know. I think it's kind of interesting. A lot of actors don't see the actual final cut of a movie before it comes out. A lot of them. So I think it is arguable people could think it's a more artistic or valuable endeavor. Especially if they got way into it. Yeah. And, like, got way into themselves well, yeah. and thought they were carrying the movie. It's like Bill Murray in the Garfield movies. He just didn't know what was coming to him. Oh, God. How could you not? Come on, man. <laughs> I'm just kidding. But, like, he had, like, a whole diatribe God. about how he was tricked into doing those movies. But I want to talk about the movie. I actually saw it. Well, I saw two-thirds of it. Um, Do we have a movie talk uh, intro? Can we just get a Joker laugh? <laughs> so I went and saw it with my sister because... She was the person who got me into Batman first with Batman the Animated Series, and she loved the character of Harley Quinn, regardless of the extensive misogynistic undertones and horrible, horrible, horrible stuff that Harley Quinn was, even in that great series. Um, and I basically told her, this movie's going to be terrible. And I showed her a lot of the Mega 64, like, Jorker updates and all that. And she kind of, like, got into the, the fun idea of this is just going to be so bad, it's going to be fun. Like, it's going to be, it's just going to be a ton of fun how bad it is. And they're going to fuck up everything. And while they did fuck up everything, the worst part about it was none of it was any fun. That's what I've been hearing. Even Batman vs. Superman was fun to make fun of at points. This was just all in all miserable. It was a chore. Yeah, Batman versus Superman. Superman was a chore, but there's a point in that movie where things get so stupid about an hour in, where it's just like, all right, I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm you, fucking loving this. You're out of the the mindset of oh, this could be good. Like basically, you're, you're into like how fucking bad can it be? Basically, when the Lex Luthor character is introduced in Batman versus Superman, it's just oh my god, this is fucking the, the scene where they're on the rooftop or whatever. Oh is god, comical. Like Jesus Christ, what was he thinking? But, you know, the movie was everything you basically expect, except not funny for how bad it was. It It's the classic uh, loop of so bad it's gone past good and back to bad again. No. Yeah, I mean, it was it, it was never so bad it's good. It didn't go past it. Oh, it, it, it didn't go it past never, it, just it, like, teetered on first, that? Like, <laughs> for the first few, like, like, almost every scene, me and my sister were just, like, slumped down in our seats going, ah! Uh, no. Uh, because it starts out by introducing the various characters. You know, they have a little, the whole pitch of, oh, we've, we've got to assemble a team of the worst of the worst. And everyone's been praising, like, the only good thing in the movies are Will Smith and Viola Davis. Davis is like the serious government agent who doesn't give a fuck. She's just deadpan. 
That doesn't mean good. There's nothing about playing a serious character in a stupid, silly movie that makes it good. Like, I, I don't know. Anyway, so when they finally start introducing the characters, each of them have like a moment where it's like out of a bad sitcom where it you like walk in on the scene and they're doing something crazy and then it like <laughs> like a title card shows up with it, their yeah, no, fucking name no it freeze frames yeah I, and then a video game screen style thing comes up oh no where it's like a video game pose of them like holding a gun or something wow and it has like age date of birth a little bio likes little and bio, dislikes likes yeah. strength likes weaknesses killing innocent people but the, the thing is likes yes rats but the thing is like that. Each time they do this, they play a different song. Okay. It's like watching a series. Make a theme and stick with it. It's like watching a series of music videos. So by the time I was an eighth of the, like, through the movie. And does it, it do felt that, like, like, right off the bat over and over and over? Yes. How many characters They go from one to another. There's, like, six. Okay, so that's, like, 30 minutes probably, right? Yes. Okay. So by the time I was, like, no, it was, like, a third of the way through the movie, I felt like I listened to someone's really bad playlist. And it was just the most generic bullshit. Was the 21 Pilot song linked up with one of the character intros? No. Okay. It but did it show of, up in the movie? Yeah. Okay, it was you like, got that far. Yes. Okay. It was good. like a bunch of classic rock and stuff for a few of them. And Paul Room Blitz. Oh, God, no, <laughs> no. That was in a trailer. No, Little Deuce Coop. <laughs> <laughs> what, are you kidding me? <laughs> no, it's not <laughs> I just wanted to say that. <laughs> I just thought that would be a good oh, idea. Oh, Surfing USA. Oh, fuck yes. <laughs> Little disc. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, that needs to be our outro. Little, that can be the outro. Little deuce <laughs> <laughs> And the title is funny enough on its own. Oh, I know. Um, but <laughs> I'm gonna edit Fred Durst in a little so, deuce coop. So basically. <laughs> With Jared Little, like, in the back. Oh, just a stretch out of him going... <laughs> He's just actually the windshield art. I'm going to make his tattoo say Little Deuce Coop on his forehead. Man, you got your work cut out for you. <laughs> Woo! I can do that tonight. I'm going to have to remember all this. Just oh, <laughs> let me write it down right now. I'm, Jeez. I'm... <laughs> Jared Little, Little Deuce Coop Man, tattoo. I'm, uh, yeah, I'm going to write down. I'm a little hot behind the collar right now, so... Good. Um, oh, I'm writing down Jared but, Little, Little Deuce So Coop. basically... It gets to a point where it's just like Jared Leto do scoop. Jared Leto do scoop. <laughs> Leto do scoop. That might be it. That might be it. <laughs> what? <laughs> okay, look. The Whoa. movie, it kind of stumbles along. and They finally unify the <laughs> characters and they all have like, like, okay, the worst part of the movie is easily is the is the harley quinn character right because it is the most sexist horrible gross like fan servicey thing i've ever seen like outside I've of even much heard that it amounts to uh an abusive relationship with a mentally ill <laughs> spouse or whatever and that's but that, is that, too, is that too generous no, that's stupid yeah okay <laughs> no i wouldn't describe it as that at all i mean i read that and i was like i think that's gonna be a little it's like a credit. bunch of sweaty fat men in a room making up punchlines they think are funny for someone they think is really hot to say do all the uh, other characters look at her booty when she walks yes, away yeah. there is a scene yes well, they show it in one of the commercials where, like, yeah. she bends she over. the elevator after, or something, No, right? she, like, breaks the glass of, like, like a fashion shop window and gets a purse out of it and bends over and shows Margot Robbie's, like, flat butt. And, like, Captain Boomerang goes, The hell is wrong with you people? And it, like, zooms in on her butt and 21 Pilots play. <laughs> <laughs> and that doesn't really happen. She's my little deuce coop. Oof. He's a douche, all right. But, um... <laughs> wow. Thanks. What? Thanks, I got a good one in there. Um, she delivers the worst lines I've ever seen. And the trailers illustrated that. Uh, the, man, the trailers It's just the were, voices in my right, head. Right, huh? exactly. Or, or, like, how does it go? It's like... I don't remember. I don't know. It's like, oh, it's just the voices in my head. They don't like you anyway, or they're, something. They're telling it's me like, to kill everybody or, or something. It's like, it is just like, ugh. Sometimes it's like, they'll deliver a bad joke and you think it's over. But then they do, like, two more on top of it. Like, immediately afterwards, it's just like, here's a bad joke that falls flat. Now here's another. And then here's another one. It's like, oh! Just imagining the screenplay, bad joke that falls flat. 
Patrick like, the Fall it's Flat. like they're made. It's like some. It's made to have a punchline, like feel like a punchline, but it just. It's like, ah, uh, it just, it hurts. Like there's no punchline. They just say things and like the way people pause and make a punchline, but right, it's not it, a they punchline. Pause for, they pause for laughs. Yes, and there's no punchline. I though. wish there was a laugh track. And Will Smith makes comments about like white people and stuff in it. And ri- well, Will Smith plays himself in all. He movies. he actually uh, you know like most people have said is like one of the best parts of the movie, but he's still making like they're still just like really stupid like, you know how comedy has kind of evolved where there's like an awkward like scene that goes on for too long where people like have an argument or like they're like holding guns to each other and, like no you drop it no you drop it man no you drop it's supposed I mean, to be it sounds funny. like Key and Peele yeah yeah and it's like that the, the movie is just filled with that stuff except not as i hate to say elegantly orchestrated as key and peel it's just like oh my god and so just horrible horrible punchline city basically the only characters that have any like point to them or like any flash or flare are harley quinn and will smith and that that's it the, the killer croc is a, um the boomerang guy who just drinks beers like behind dumpsters and stuff and they like pan to him right there, there's like a shot of him opening a can behind a car in one of the trailers and like sneaking away like they have uh, there's, <laughs> they're not even in there they're just there to make a squad th- the pause for uh, a vape you know pause for vape and then the guy blows out the rings and it says ha 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 and there there's a character who in can smoke there's a character who can control fire who Half the movie he spends saying, he, he's Hispanic, I don't do that anymore. I don't do, no, I don't do it anymore. And then at one point, like, basically the movie starts with Viola Davis's character as the government trying to recruit all these guys, and she goes to this dude who's the Flame Lord or whatever. <laughs> flame Lord. Um, sounds like something on a, like a web forum. And um, he's like, I don't do that anymore. Meanwhile, he's in like this iron tube for some reason, and... They keep begging him, and eventually he just, like, puts up his hand, and, like, the word no comes out in flames. It's, oh, in flames. So it's and a lot... Yeah, okay. It's just like, oh! And another funny thing was... See, I'm waiting for a vapist that can do that with smoke. <laughs> just no. <laughs> and the next movie, Jared Leto's Joker vapes. Uh, wouldn't that oh, wow, be a okay? Thing? I could believe it with the take they're trying to make. Right, but take on him. The FDA is really cracking down on vapes. I don't care. Um, <laughs> I have to keep going. So another thing that's really funny is <laughs> they they like had to crowbar Ben Affleck's Batman into this. It really I heard a when cameo I saw the, by Ben Affleck. When I saw the wow. trailer, it looked like maybe a CGI Batman or just some guy in a Batman <laughs> suit, and I was like, eh, whatever. But. He's in here just so people can be like, oh, he was really in there. Like, this is actually a universe. But the funny thing about it is, if you see Batman versus Superman, that is such a hyper serious movie, like this brooding failure of a movie, that when he's like suddenly on screen talking to Will Smith's character in a flashback, it is it is so confusing. It's like, wait, this character. How are these the same world? This can't be in the same universe, like these characters. So th- there's major, major tonal issues. And, like, everything's just crowbarred together. Like, the editing, it is just, like, hysterical. I've heard the editing's terrible. All, it's just, like, scenes will cut, like, almost mid-sentence, like, with no rhyme or reason. And David Ayers, or whatever his name is, he's done he the did movies the, that are um, Fury the or one whatever. With Jake Gyllenhaal, like, um, the police movie. Right? Not Ride Along. Oh. Fury Squad. <laughs> Ride Along with Ice Cube. Uh. What was it? Uh um, Fuck. It was end really, of watch. Yeah, it was actually really well received. He did. He did training day. I thought that was why wow, he did. He did not do training day. Oh, what happened? Antoine Fuqua, who's doing the Scarface remake. The training day is like, a good movie. Training day is good. It's a good yeah, movie. I like, like that movie. Man, fuck, dude. But you know, like this dude's done movies that are pretty well respected, and he just has been a total dick with this this whole thing. David Ayer, um. First of all, if you look up pictures of him, he looks like a total asshole. Like, he look looks at, like a retired wrestler. Look at oh, this God, guy. No, he look, doesn't. Look at this guy. And uh, he said, fuck Marvel at like the premiere for Suicide cool, Squad. Dude. And then he had to later apologize for it on behalf of Warner Brothers. <laughs> um, I, I don't know. Like The whole movie was a train wreck. But the worst part about it is none of it was fun. And about two thirds through, it turns into a zombie movie. Have you heard about that? Sure. Why, I mean, why not? The villain is... The, Why not double down on your hideous, like, appealing to dregs this, of society movie? This movie is a combination of, like, The Hangover, 
What? No, no. The Hangover, <laughs> Spider Man Three with too many villains, crowbar together, and like, I don't know. Throw like some whatever oh, shitty action movie in there. You're but, really giving me a stomachache. But two thirds through the, the the squad just fights. The the main villain turns out to be Enchantress, which is this is the most boring villain ever. Like, seriously, the most boring villain. And considering she can do almost anything, it's amazing that they made her boring. And she she turns peop- humans into zombies by making out with them. Why not? And she's played by Cara Delevingne, who is, yes, attractive, but they just use her to, like, make out with people and make zombies and shit. And it was just, like... I bet there's a scene where she kisses another girl. Oh, no. Really? Um, amazing. I gotta show you the zombies from Suicide Squad. They're so... Stupid looking. They just look like warts. How are these images not out? Ugh. They just look like blank faces with boils all over them. They're like pulsing. And she is just the worst. She looks like a like a combination of the grudge um, villain and like 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 a hot grudge villain. I don't know. It's, it's really frustrating. And um, she... She's the enchant. She's actually possessed by an ancient spirit that is enchantress, and she can like go between the enchantress um, possession and like the her normal human self by just whispering enchantress. Why doesn't she just do that? But no, that's how she brings her on, and she can literally oh. do anything like teleport them around around the world, like control time, and yet they completely fuck this up by turning into a zombie shooting movie with the Suicide um, Squad. Isn't DC the same universe with Superman? Yes, of course. So why don't they just call fucking Superman? He, isn't he, like, perfect? Or is Henry Cavill busy because that Henry day? Cavill, was, he was up to something at the time. Okay. Is it Cavill he was or Cavill? Fighting, fighting, I've always heard um, Cavill. I don't know. Uh, Van Alden. <laughs> For 45 minutes. <laughs> throw, just exploding. Dial of FBI agents! Exploding through villains. Near before the I don't know. But, yeah, we walked out when it turned into a zombie movie. I just couldn't handle it anymore. It was just one bad one liner that didn't take like like hit at you, all. You had seen after enough another to yeah. Get a- and me and my sister were just like writhing in our seats as as Harley as fucking Margot did, Robbie did made more bad lines. Did you make any comments lines. as you got up? Oh, I flicked off the movie as I walked out. That was, that's a little too much. I did that in Batman versus Superman too. Couldn't you just been like, oh no, fuck like, this? We very like we made like a, a ruckus when we were leaving of on course. purpose. Like she like just j- spill I, your drink. I, I was totally like jingle your purse, just j- right. jingle like jingle your purse around. Like maybe spill your drink on somebody. She didn't do it, but um and like right as I'm about to like at the bottom of the steps, but like about to go to like the the hallway out, I just like lifted my fucking. <laughs> <laughs> like, it was just so stupid, yes. But every but everyone there was so stupid they probably thought it was brand ass. Jeez, what is this guy? This guy deal? doesn't is give Is he one of the Suicide Squad members? Is, wow, he's guy, oh, he's wacky, he's off the wall. This guy doesn't give a fuck. Just like them. I'm so badass. Nick the whole audience is just Nick clones. <laughs> but man, it was this what a betrayal. It couldn't even be so bad it's good. It couldn't even be so bad it's good. Come on! Like, it's not even fun to make fun of. It's just a misery and a blemish on cinema. And Warner Brothers, man, like, like the reason they made it so comedic and lighthearted was because, oh, everybody hated how serious Batman vs. Superman was. We're going to do it this way. I don't know where you're going to find your fucking balance. And I don't want to give Marvel praise, but at least Marvel puts out about the same quality of movie every time right. with a balance of comedy that they doesn't... They could fucking make Ant-Man get at least a 70 on with, Metacritic or whatever. With a balance of comedy quote-unquote comedy that isn't entirely, like, doesn't make my skin crawl. You know, it's like, ah, all right. But it's it's it doesn't hurt me like this movie does. So, it's, come on, just hire someone who cares to write this movie. Just somebody. I don't know. You could have maybe written a better movie with the same actors. And, yeah, Jared Leto's Joker. I haven't even gotten, I haven't talked about the Joker at all. He, he just, he just kind of does Joker stuff. Like, he just, like, there's this club scene where, for no reason, he's talking to, like, some arms dealer, and he's like, you like my girl? And Harley Quinn's, like, dancing in the birdcage or whatever the fucking thing is called. He's like, why don't you have a slush? And he, like, calls her Harley, or, like, Puddin', or, no, she calls him Puddin'. Um, she comes over and, like, gives him a lap dance, and he's like, hey, baby. And he's like, then he, like, stands up and he's like, you like my girl? 
And then the guy's oh, like, he get offended? "No, Joker. No, I wouldn't like the Joker. I wouldn't like the Joker girl." And then he she says, "Yo," and then he about, kills him. Right, of course. And it's like it, it, he takes it, offense to her. It's just like her. random scenes. Like there's no rhyme, there's no logic to it. Or Look like, at the Joker. Look at the Joker. He's, he's just, on screen. And like, wow, wow, when, wow. When he's acting, he like he like wipes his brow and like, drags his hand down his face, and he tries so hard to be like, "Whoa, this guy's weird. He's so weird. It's weird." A little throwback there. Um, but yes, it was a wreck, and I want to get off this topic. I just had to talk about it. We had to immortalize it. I saw it. I pe- and luckily, Man, I didn't pay money for it. Because another milestone. Did you buy a ticket to Bad Mom? No. Uh. But I didn't. We didn't buy shit because we had a gift card. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Um. So we didn't really pay for anything. We used somebody else's money. Um. Anyway, it's we're moving on to something. You remember that fucking rat? I don't want to get off of movies yet. I want to. What, what do you want to talk about? Have you seen anything else? No. Just Suicide Squad. I saw the Killing Joke um, animated movie. Uh, is that's new, right? Yeah, it was. It was better than um, Suicide Squad, but it was terrible too. Wow. Okay. They uh, the the um, the problem with the original Killing Joke graphic novel, which is really good, um, if you like, you know, if you if you're still into Batman, but uh, it's it's well written and kind of cool and has great art. But the problem with it is it uses um, Batgirl or Barbara Gordon as, like, the, I guess, the MacGuffin to make two men face off in the end. Okay. And the Joker, like, paralyzes her just to kind of egg on Commissioner Gordon and make Batman and Joker fight. So it's like everybody said it was misogynistic and fucking sexist and horrible. You just use this character for that. And in this movie, they do the same thing, except they make her fuck Batman for no reason on a rooftop and um, wow. then have like this weird subplot of like, you can't one night stand me, Bruce. What is this? And it's like, you just made this twice as worse. You took the criticism people had of the, the graphic novel, the only one, and doubled it. Like, why would you not take what everyone's been bitching about for years and diminish it instead of, nope, I don't know. It was bad. It was like a really long, bad episode of an animated Batman something so that's all I've seen. What about you? Well, I have. It's been a. I've been thinking about this movie for so long, and I finally got around to watching it. Trolls. I finally watched um, a movie called Apocalypse Now, which found. Oh. It sounds a lot like your barbecue dad's favorite uh, apocalypse yeah. movie. Yeah. It's, it's a Jeff a, classic. It's a Francis Ford Coppola movie about the Vietnam War. I didn't know he did that. Yeah. Uh, have you? Do you know anything about the movie? No. It's a Vietnam movie. Oh. Yeah, it doesn't sound like it, right? It wow. sounds like it goes right along with sounds Armageddon like an alien in, movie, yeah. Independence Day, right? It sounds just like it. Yeah, uh, I think it was made in 77, starring Martin Sheen, Marlon Brando, Harrison Ford, Dennis Hopper, Robert Duvall. Uh, star-studded cast, really. Mm. Um, Gosh, I would say I like it better than Full Metal Jacket, mm. which is tough. That's a great, Damn, great Vietnam that's movie. That's amazing. Marlon Brando. Woo! I like that. That's kind of cool. Uh, yeah, it's a it's a really good movie. I um the imagery is very vivid and like kind of bright. There's a lot of weird editing in that movie where they overlay shots <laughs> with like just burning like forests and stuff with like people screaming in pain. It's oh, it's like a really that. interesting movie. Um, but what I'm I, I really enjoyed it. It's more like an adventure movie than a Vietnam War movie. There aren't like any big shootouts with like you know Vietnamese people or anything and. I I um speaking of war movies, well, do you have anything else to say? Yeah, uh, sorry. <laughs> great movie. If you're not into war movies, but like Francis Ford Coppola and like The Godfather and stuff, and just kind of want to check out his filmography, great place to start. Um, it's an adaptation of a Joseph Conrad novel called Hearts of, or, uh, Heart of Darkness. Have you heard of that? Uh, yes, I think I have it over there actually. Now, what I'm really interested it was about required this movie, reading that I didn't read. <laughs> Great movie. I really enjoyed it. What I'm really interested in is uh, the documentary that goes along with it mm-hmm. called Hearts of Darkness. Mm. I think the subtitle is A Filmmaker's Apocalypse or something. Oh. It's just about like the making of the movie and how Marlon Brando showed up like drunk and really overweight to the like set and everything. Just like how awful the whole thing was. Like Martin Sheen had a heart attack during one of the f- scenes. What? Like, it's crazy. Um, I'm really interested in watching that. I really want to see that. So. I've been searching for like the deluxe edition with the uh, the documentary and the movie because, uh, yeah, I was I was really thrilled by that. You just re- old old <laughs> Vietnam movie. I was really 
really taken by it. It was awesome. It was like three and a half hours long. It was great. Oh, you you got me thinking about war movies that I like. Um, have you ever heard of or seen the movie Patton? I, I think I've heard of it. Obviously, you know who I hope you know George Patton was, right? Yeah, a general. Right? One of the it was like one of the I think like four or five star generals. One of the few. Few He's ones. like the best known general of, yeah. in military history. Um, it's George C. Scott playing him, and it's from 1970, and it's is really incredible, and it deals a lot with like like political correctness finally getting into war. So you've seen this? Yes, it's incredible. So you're not a war movie person, right? No. Like, but this is an see, amazing I think you, movie. I think you would like Apocalypse Now because it's 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 really strange. Marlon Brando plays this like kind of prophet character for the natives and they all follow him and he goes rogue he's pretty much <gasps> look at this what written by francis ford coppola oh, that. part of that uh Patton. wow uh pretty much the the premise is this uh i think lieutenant colonel goes rogue and you find out he's gone insane and like is getting all the natives to like get behind him mm. and martin sheen is sent to kill him but he gets there and it's just like this is more than I expected. It's it's really great. I really I need to see it because I've always heard about it. You yeah you hear Apocalypse Now and you're like Independence Day Armageddon. Yes! It's just like ugh, I don't want to get into that. Um yeah, adapt ad, ad, ad cut that out. Adapted from the Joseph Conrad novel uh, Heart of Darkness. It's just like takes a setting from the Congo River and puts it in Vietnam. It's not it's not a war movie really. As war aspects, but the cool thing about Patton though is it's a war movie, but it's more a character study. Yeah, exactly. It's really cool. Lawrence um, Fishburne also in. Uh, uh, he's like a sixteen-year-old Lawrence Fishburne in that movie. What? Apocalypse. I didn't even recognize him, and he goes by Larry Fishburne in the uh, the credits. Sorry, I just have to look it up. Well, I always misspell that name. Yeah, that's in there. Oh my god! Jeez! Was this when the acne began? Must have been. Oh yeah, they it. Look, it's literally yeah, there. He, he lied about his age to get on the cast. He was like sixteen or something. Amazing. I really like Lawrence Fishburne, even though he is pretty, very consistent actor as far as what quality is. I didn't know Harrison Ford had any involvement. Um, he he must have been very young as well. He's barely in it. Uh, he's just at the very beginning. Like um, but yeah, it's very, very rare that I watch a movie and I'm just like I gotta own that, and that was definitely one of them because oh, I, I need know. to. I, li I like that feeling. I have to. Get I like the, that feeling. I have to watch the documentary. I'm amazed I don't own Patton. Anyway, well, I gotta check that out now. You've got me all jazzed for it. You gotta set aside some time. It's like three and a half hours. Well, you know, Patton, it's, a, it's a Coppola movie. Patton so. is 270 minutes. That's um. Well, holy shit! It's a really serious experience. That's four and a half hours. Yeah. It's a, it's a serious fucking experience. Um, it, it's very detailed. You know the um, song "Ride of the Valkyries" or whatever. Yeah. Da -na 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 -na. Right. That da -na 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 -na. apocalypse now made it da -na -na. famous. That's why it's in Metal Gear, like in the helicopter. Theme. Wait, hold on. I may have fucked up. I got. I have to clarify this, or else when I'm editing this, I'll hate myself. It is. Um, is one hundred seven one hundred seventy minutes? Excuse me. I don't say four and a half hours. That's, that's fucking psychotic. So it's almost three hours. Yeah. 250. Really good, though. Um, I'll watch definitely that. a movie to watch with your dad. Like, really? Yeah, that's the, like really good dad movie because, you know, it's about a strong, silent type kind of guy, old values, very firm, good stuff. Um, so, yeah, if you're not into war movies but like Coppola, definitely watch Apocalypse Now. I showed you the Dunkirk trailer the other night. Right, the, or, the Christopher teaser. Nolan thing. Yeah, um, which was the best part of seeing Suicide Squad. Like, I'd already seen it on the internet, but to see that, like, stretched out on a, the like, a theater screen. Have you not screen, seen it before the... Oh, I saw it before, okay. but it was like, okay, this is different when I finally saw it, because the way he frames those shots, it's so... There's, like, such an an incredible ambiance to it. It's It's... And from what I can tell, it looks like it's following British troops. Yeah. So I, 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 I'm, I'm totally interested in World War II stuff. And I from think, a different perspective than the U.S. side, that's awesome. If anything, I think Nolan might finally get an Oscar. Um, well, not well, Nolan, but... It is one of those Nolan, subjects that's like, it's got to be an It's going to be for cinematography, probably, okay, yeah. I think. Because the way the movie looks, it's just... Jesus Christ. It's, it's like unflinching and also beautiful and also like extreme and like unrelenting oh i just well we've talked about nolan does wait. scope so well just like 
big thing. Oh, and it's all in IMAX. He's one of the last oh. last guys that's... You know how hard it is to do that shit? IMAX cameras are horrifying to work with. If you, Hold on. If you've never seen an IMAX camera, they're, they're gargantuan. Um, let's see. IMAX camera. Come on! When does uh, Dunkirk come out? <sighs> Let me look. It's like a year from now. There is an IMAX camera. Ooh, I bet that costs quite a oh, bit. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, uh, all the pictures of uh, are stupid. of Nolan. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Look at him in a fucking suit or without the tie. Ooh, July 21st, 2017. Oh, man, so, I was hoping it'd be like November, maybe. Although, you know, it's going to get hyped up. The, the thing that's controversial about it, or for me, is Harry right, Styles one of guy. One Direction is going to play a big role in it. And he's like the biggest douchey guy in One Direction. Well, my internet's failing well, you here. You never know. But Cillian Murphy, Tom Hardy, you know, I, was like, I like them both very much. And it'll be interesting you know i didn't expect matthew mcconaughey to ever be anything well i was about to say matthew Back mcconaughey is like the quintessential like douchey mm -hmm. guy before uh true detective and mm -hmm. dallas buyers club so you never know anyway so i mean well okay the true detective guy tried to do that with vince vaughn and it did not pan out Ugh. you can't fix that you can't fix fix vaughn you can't no. vince vaughn <laughs> That's so stupid. he is worthless um I read an article the other day, we're segueing here, that really upset me. And a bunch of people were getting giving it lights. Likes. Science explains why you hate when people use periods in their texts. Now what? Would you agree that we're probably a little bit uh pedantic in our, I was about to say that in yeah. our texting and stuff. And it I, I mean I th I'm not saying I am I'm saying a lot of people would think that if they knew what that meant. <laughs> I just, well, using the word pedantic is pedantic in Stop itself. Stop it! No! How do you explain? <laughs> There's no other word. No, I know. Uh, There's no other word besides like pompous. It's only or like um, stickers, pretentious. That's yeah, the only thing that I approaches mean, it. I prefer to text with correct grammar unless I'm making a goof. And it's not. I'm not trying to make a point. I just, I just do that. I want to. I want to come across. Yeah. Clearly, like. Well, this article is from Mike.com. I don't know. I just I was linked to this on Facebook. I'm going to read a little bit of it. Ending a text message with a period is basically the same thing as ending a text message with a screenshot of an iPhone note that says, listen, I hate you. Most what? civilized and considerate people know this, so they will either eschew punctuation in their text altogether or feign enthusiasm with an exclamation point, which I hate, um, as a way to assure the person in the receiving end that they are, indeed, chill. But if you still haven't figured this out on your own, and you're one of those period-using people... Oh my god. Perhaps this will persuade you to stop texting like an asshole. Linguists have a new explanation for why we hate when people use periods in texts. And basically, it's because using a period makes you sound angry or insincere. Anything fuck, to say fuck, before... Fuck, fuck, fuck! Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh my god! They're, they're calling people who use correct punctuation uncivilized. Yes. Holy fuck, is, man, we're going fucking backwards! It is. It's just like the fucking lip sync battles. It's just <laughs> like the emojis being hieroglyphs on a fucking caveman wall. Ooh. Holy god, fuck! Oh, it I'm is. gonna fucking. Look. Oh, I'm gonna put my head in an oven! It is incredible. I can help you out with that. Um, Pizza's gonna be ready. And this is a quote I'll cook myself in there. The use of a period is one example of situational code switching. Linguistic scholar Lauren Colliser wrote in a recent article on The Conversation. When using a period in a text message, it's perceived as overly formal, Colliser wrote. So when you end your text with a period, it can come across as insincere or awkward. Just like using a formal spoken language in a casual setting like a bar. This is like... Man, I'm hot. This is trigger bait for me. I hate to use that kind of terminology, but, you know, that's what the kids like to hear today. What is, what is happening? What is happening? This isn't the first time researchers... This is an article. ...have sought to explain why periods are so bad. Last year, an entire study from Binghamton University... I love that Binghamton. place. Binghamton. Very noted Binghamton University. Fuck you! 
was devoted to the topic. <laughs> Researchers had 126 college-aged subjects read through a series of text exchanges to determine how sincere each of them seemed based on their punctuation. To no one's surprise, the results indicated that responses that ended with a period were rated as less sincere than text messages that did not end with a period. Dude, what the fuck? Is this real? Is this not an Onion article? This is real. And I saw someone on Facebook posting it. So th this like, was something you saw. It. So somebody was like, I just knew. Listen up, guys. This is my take. I just knew we would be so furious about it. Because, like, I knew this would get us fired up. It is just. It is infuriating. I don't know. Like. I. Man, I'm telling you, the the world ends when someone go like pushes a wrong button and they look at each other and they just like send a little message to each other oh. and, and everyone just looks around in mortal confusion. And they're like, I don't know what that means, and then the world explodes because no one knows how to fucking talk anymore. <laughs> it, 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 that's it. Oh Jesus! So IMAX cameras are actually kind of good looking. <laughs> Sorry. Just looking at IMAX cameras. All right, next article. I had nothing else to say about that. I just wanted to bring There's that shit up. There's nothing to say. Um, you remember when you showed me that rat video? Where, you With know, the, I always call the it the ghost, rat. the mouse, where the ghost comes out. Oh yeah, of I, course. I saw something that I knew would get your uh, attention. Ghostly image. A ghostly image. I've seen this. Oh, I saved this no. article on Facebook. Oh, <laughs> I saved this. There was a fatal accident in um, Kentucky. Where people think that a man captured a supernatural moment where... I hope it's a vapor. <laughs> it's Nick! I, I don't know. Well, that accident was badass. It's just a photo with a faint outline of a figure hovering over the accident scene. And um, the man involved in the, the crash later died at the hospital. And I just... People were freaking out. I, always, I love the thing on Facebook. Proof. Proof. It's proof. God exists. Um, this is it. Heaven. Oh. Uh -huh. I think there's a person, this is a quote from Carmen Clay, I think there's a person that passed away, is watching, his looking down on his own body. Hold on, let me read that. I mean, that's what let I me, would expect from someone who's me, fucking believing that a spirit is leaving the body and you can see it. Let me this read guy this. This guy is illiterate I'm going to read this verbatim. Jesus. Verbatim you're, slowly. You are just, oh, you're, Carmen you're Clay getting me fired up quoted, right now. I think there's a person that passed away, is watching, his looking down on his own body. I don't know. I just thought it was so funny. This this stupid picture with like just a smudge on it from like and a tree. Fucking CNN is reporting yes, on this. Everyone was reporting on this. Look, of course you know slow news Amazing. days. All that. I um I just I couldn't it, get enough. Uh, I could what not is get enough. The world has ended. Um, well, don't use periods. Lesson number one. Or else you're a fucking asshole. Lesson number two. Don't watch Suicide Squad. Pirate it. Lesson number three. Um, look down on his own body is leaving. There you go. Time for music picks of the week. What What are we doing here? What are we looking at on music picks? Because it's the last one for a while. You got to make first? an impact. You got to make an impact. No, I want you first. Me first. Me f you first. Me first. Okay. Me, me. I think I'd be a little remiss if I didn't mention this band. Uh, we've been talking a little bit back and forth. I think you probably already know who it is. No. <laughs> I'm not going to give you this. You showed me a song a while ago, and I said, seems like something that would you know you want to keep to yourself. Let's shut up, puppets. You got me into them so big. I'm oh yeah, I'm, you were texting me about I'm that. I'm so into them right now. Are you really? Man. Oh, um, I'm still into them, but I kind of burned myself out because I I've been doing it for I'm, so I'm much trying, longer than you. I'm trying not. to. I've been doing it since like '09 or whenever that album came out. Yeah, the first I, one. I'm or really, 07. really, really into them right now. Um, you said you don't like the new album as much, and I get it. I like the, the it's new got album, stronger single songs. The new album is but not a overall. Bit, a little bit poppier. The first one's a little rock heavy or more rock oriented. Everything you've come to expect, the, the actual title track is not... <laughs> no, but, like, there are two or three that are kind of like... kind of like, what the fuck, Pop, I guess. I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know what that would be. I mean, the way that, like, Lucy in the Sky with Diamonds was probably... Yeah, pop, you know? yeah. And we've made that comparison before. Of course. Um, my pick is from their first album. Oh. I got The Chamber, a big one, very dreamlike to me, like we've... 
talked about. Uh, yeah, we're going to go with that one. It's a good one. Hit it. Leave yourself alone. Leave yourself I love that album. I've got I, as as I just pointed I out to you Jay a while back. I just said thank you for getting me into them, which I it feels so good. You just don't I, know. Like seriously, it's one of my favorite albums I've heard maybe ever. Like see, I, I can't put it into words. I just that's amazing because I remember and it came out of nowhere. I had um, I think it was my second girlfriend in high school. It was this super hipster girl, and I found this album. I was like, oh my god. She is gonna love this album because we were big into music. Like we were such big, like, like trying to like jerk each other off with music and stuff all the time. And she thought this album was so boring. Oh! She thought it was the most. Of course, this is a girl who liked Edward Sharp and the Magnetic Zeros and said they were so cute. She You're it was really a bad girlfriend. It was a bad girlfriend. She was a bad. Girlfriend. Just like that Nickelback song. It's a bad, bad girlfriend. I haven't heard that one. That might be the outro. Actually, I know we had one previously, Little Deuce Cooper, or whatever. But you've got to hear this. <laughs> it's the worst Nickelback back song. Uh, like I, I was telling Jay, I bought a poster. I'm so and thrilled. I, I've got the physical album that he's in love with. I'm, I'm looking for it. I was looking for a vinyl. Even, I got just, it at um, having, you know? Coconuts. Yeah, you're like um, me. You don't even have a um a record player. Do well, you? Daniel does, but I, I've got like two or three records over there. <laughs> My favorites. Um, yeah, it's just something to own. You know. Oh yeah, it, if. I know it's kind of a stupid, like, trendy thing to do, but if you can actually get one of the wall-hanging things for your albums, I've been meaning to do that for a long time. You can literally hang your, you, like... Without, like, puncturing holes in them? Yeah. Yeah. You okay. can actually hang it in, like, a little grip thing and just display it. It's really... Because that's the best part of vinyl. I mean... Yeah. Like, a lot of people argue that it's... Oh, it's a blown-up album cover. It's superior. Cover. It's the superior Oh, I just body. think it's cool that they're it fucking is, albums. But there's more, you know, problems with it, too. My, my dad was an audiophile when he was young. He hates MP3s and all this. Says everything's all over-compressed, but... Um, I, yeah, I... Man, Last Shadow Puppets. I'm sitting here Both looking those at that albums. album, the physical copy, man. I, it's incredible. I have a lot of memories with this thing. Both those albums are really something. I need to get um the new one. Everything you come yeah, with. Yeah, I, I don't even have the full album on my computer because I've, I've gotten so into listening to full albums on YouTube. Yeah. Like, I don't download stuff that much anymore because of that. I hate it. Uh, do you remember when we were talking about the song Everything That You Come To Expect mm -hmm. and... um. We talked Delightfully about Delightfully Apocalyptic. Uh, I well, believe yeah. were your words. Uh, Croc skin collar on a diamond dog. Yeah, those lyrics being a Bowie, are a Bowie insane. reference. Yeah. Um, there's also a part in Miracle Aligner where he says, um, and it sounds like a Bowie it's a line. Good song. It sounds like a Bowie line where he says, um, "He was born to blow your mind" or something along those lines. Ooh. The way he says it sounds like a Bowie line. Like you got to well, listen to that. If you think about it, I times, always think that. Just, don't the times kind of line up? Perfectly. Yeah. Have you grown to like that music video for everything you come to expect? Oh yeah. I. Yeah. It's I funny. I showed it, it to Daniel when we were drinking one night, and I was like, "Look, this isn't for everyone, but I, like, I really like this song." And he was like, "Yeah, I mean, you know, I've never been into well, this Daniel's kind of music." Daniel's not into indie stuff, like or like that, right? He was like, "It's good, but you know, I've never been into it." It's I think. I think one day. He might appreciate it. I don't know. He might grow up to be a big man. Hopefully. You never know with that stuff. But sprout. no, it's like I told you the first time I, I saw that. I I didn't like the song at all. Right. Because I, I was so familiar with the set, the less, like, you say, it's a little more poppy in it the, is. On this album. I was so familiar with the more guitar driven stuff of um the, the Age of the Understatement. Understatement. And I was just like, God, this is different. It's so different. And, um,. I listen. I just kept listening to it over and over until like one week it got stuck in my head, and I'd just be like stuck at work in a bad mood, and it just would be playing over over my head. I was like, "Damn!" Well, do you remember it's the way really you presented good. it to me? We were about to film the Big Bang Theory thing. Yeah, you were just like, "I got to show this." I mean, mm -hmm. you, you got to hear this, see what you think. 
and you I need was, to uh, come back to it. It was a pretty lukewarm, kind of tepid response. Oh, it was, was like very tepid. I was mad that day. I, I was just like, it. you know, I, I expected. It seems more. like something you want to keep to yourself. Mm-hmm. Was, you know, whatever. Uh, I don't know. It's a grower. You're right. Incredible song, incredible band. Yeah, I I prefer them so much over Arctic Monkeys. Arctic Monkeys, yeah. like Arctic Monkeys, talk about pop music. <laughs> they call this like the first album like Baroque pop, right? A lot of yeah, it, which is yeah. a really cool thing because Baroque is my favorite form of classical music. But um, whether or not that actually has that much to do with it is still up to question. But I'm gonna do my pick, please. Um, you know, I find as I get a little. Older and older, I'm looking back at music that tries to kind of capture the essence of older music in a pretty non-pretentious way. You know, occasionally it's unavoidable because, I don't know, The Last Shadow Puppets kind of tries to do that. They have that Beatles edge on the first album mixed with like their own spin, kind of a little touch of Arctic Monkeys. Right, they, and they have a lot of string stuff. Yeah, oh, and that, that makes it like a fucking Bond soundtrack. That's one of the reasons awesome. I love it so yeah, much. It's awesome. Um, it There's parts in that first album that are just like jaw-droppingly gorgeous. Uh, there's a really funny interview where I think Miles Kane is just like, yeah, that album was a bit crazy in parts. <laughs> it's just like, I listen to like some of the songs, I'm like, yeah, I see where he's coming from. Yeah. But that's why I like it. It's oh, like yeah. They save all these experimental ideas that they know they can't do with their main bands. Like, I can't remember what Alex Turner does. He used... He used to... Alex Turner's Arctic Monkeys. No, no, no. Miles, no, 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 Kane. Miles Kane. Sorry. Miles Kane was in a band... I'm getting called, a little drunk. Miles Kane was in a band called The Rascals that didn't last very long. And then he did his own solo stuff. Gotcha. Well, it's like where they go for their experimental stuff. And I like it a lot. But yeah. So, it's that's kind of like looking back music. That, you know, very late 60s kind of stuff. Right. Which we've talked about so much, like to and death. you know, I wanted something that was a little more seventies AM pop rock. You know what that means, really? There are a lot. There's a lot of. You ever heard the the, the concept AM gold? You know, songs that you catch driving out of town that are kind of losing the signal, and okay. you never I mean, really catch what they are. You're painting a picture, sure. But yeah. occasionally, on like a sunny day, you, you catch it again, and it's like, oh yeah, that's I, I barely caught that on the way out. Well, I wanted something that mixed it with my love for psychedelic rock and all that, and I've got a song. It's funny, you mentioned it. Um, who is it? Bob Seger had an album called Night Moves, right? A song, at least. Or a song. I'm not sure about an album. Well, this band is called Night Moves. And they have a song that I, th- I I I have a feeling you might like. It's the title track from their album, and it's called Colored Emotions. Strong choice. Thanks. Uh, it's tough to formulate an opinion in like five, six minutes. Um, it really is. But what I, what I came away from that is it's a, a little, a few similarities to Mac DeMarco in the way that. Oh, like, you he, picked up that. He's very lo-fi eighties kind of like VHS quality. This is like quality. lo-fi early seventies. Lo-fi seventies, like. exactly. Th- yeah. That's awesome. Uh, yeah, I think that they're very similar in that re- regard. I um. I, that was a great pick. Um, how do you find? How'd you find them? Let's see. You know, I actually, weirdly enough, I was on Amazon.com and I was looking at like I think way back in the day, I I, I added re- one of the real estate albums 
Right, the beachcomber. So, yeah, guys, right. To my um my wish list, and I, I just clicked on it for some reason. It had all these like similar likes. I was like, wow, these are a lot of these are really good. And I I, I pushed, listened around through several of them, and I don't know. I was really um struck by their artwork. It's very psychedelic 70s, early 70s in particular. Um, but yeah, that's awesome. It's hard to find new music that you like and it, it's that so hits you in a way nostalgic yeah like it's incredible and they're really unknown like always gauge a band's popularity by their um numbers on uh uh last fm and 37.6k view uh views um listens and if you compare that with let, let, let's say a nickelback which has oh look at them 2.7 million. Yeah, you know, it's a little it's a little different. That's like a per month thing? Is that what that is? No. That's all, like all time. I don't know, actually. That's like a subscriber thing? Is that what that no. is? No. Last FM's free. I don't know. But... Well, I mean, YouTube's free, but you can subscribe. Yeah. I, I don't know how Last FM works. I haven't used it in so long, but... There is a discrepancy there. I got you. Yeah. <laughs> there was... Um, I don't know. I, just, I was really attracted by their album artwork at first. I was like, man, I gotta, I gotta strong, see what this is. I thought pick. it would be sort of like a... A proggy kind of Pink Floyd, like whoa, like stoner rock, perfectly hazy. But like, it's like I would, it's that. I, I described it as like rounded, up, upbeat shoegaze almost. Yeah, like, I like that. And uh, it didn't make me like just gaze at my shoes. It made me gaze at the stars. I, I hope to recover from your pick of um, Blackwater by Timber Timber at some point. And so, <laughs> I, I was strong. That was very good. Thank you. Well. I'm going to add that to a playlist of mine, so... If you remember it. <laughs> I've, I've got it. Um, how do we take this out? I always say it. I don't know what I'm doing! What do we do? It's going to be a long time. How do we keep it going? It's like every second here is burning away! What do we do, Chris? We, we <sighs> didn't even line up opinion scramble. I thought about it, too! I thought about it, but I think we did it enough. <laughs> did you like the music I chose for yours? Excellent. It was um, who is it? Uh, Wave Leaper or something? Oh, was it not Marone? No, it wasn't Marone at all. It was um, I don't know. Oh, let's <laughs> take this out. Let's take this puppy out. Fuck it out, Chris. You're gonna be gone for a minute. Oh, do you hate Ugh, when people say a minute? I don't like that. Chris, you're gonna be gone for a while. <laughs> Keep that in, please. No. <laughs> Damn it. My shame. What do we do to commemorate tonight? How do we say? Where do we go? Who are we now? I am the cow. I'm that. Give me that. Hit me that. Give me that. What we doing? What we doing? What we doing? What we doing? How we going? How we going? How we going? Fred Durst. In the hearse. <laughs> We did it. <laughs> that was awesome.